everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Colleen and spring has sprung here where we live in the uh, Rocky Mountains of British Columbia and uh, we I've looked ahead at the weather forecast and uh, for the next at least 10 days we're not expecting any nighttime frost which is really unusual for this time of the year and so I've planted my garden so fingers crossed that um, we don't get one of those sneaky little frosts that can kind of come in at the last minute or any snow flurries that we can get well until in June and uh, that my garden is in safe hands. And um, I'm talking about springtime and planting and gardens. Today I have planned for you to make a rhubarb strawberry crisp. Now this can be made with any kind of fruit at you, that you want but I had planned for rhubarb and strawberry and I had set my mind to it and sometimes I can be a little bit stubborn so today I'm going to take you along on that little stubborn train of mine I was really counting on the rhubarb being ready and I don't have any rhubarb in my garden because it's quite small and rhubarb can take over but my son has rhubarb in his garden, so I sent him a message and asked him if it would be okay if I came to harvest some of his rhubarb, and he said, sure, uh, you know where it is, and so I went over there this morning to pick some fresh rhubarb, and well, wouldn't you know, his rhubarb died out over the winter. I'm not sure what would cause that, because that's one of the hardiest plants that I know, but it's gone. So um, I had to go to my deep freeze, and dig around and I found one package of rhubarb that was left over from last year. So I'm going to use that today. I would use fresh fruit if I had it rather than um, using it from the, from the deep freeze. But I, this is a good chance for me to use that, that last bag of rhubarb that's been in the freezer. The rhubarb is three cups that I measured out last year when I, when I harvested it and put it into a bag so I know that it's three cups but for a good crisp you should have um, equal parts like you want eight cups of fruit in total for this recipe now they can be a mixture of things it doesn't really matter what you put into a crisp everybody's gonna love it anyway um, today I'm using strawberries and I'm using the, the that are fresh and then the rhubarb that I had in the deep freeze but you could also use oh man apples you could use um, peaches when they're in season with blueberries um, there's any number of things you can do as long as you keep the ratios about the same so eight cups of fruit in total anyway I think that it's time for me to start gathering up all the ingredients and we'll get started on this so that um, I can talk while I work and uh, that seems to work out pretty well for me. So the first thing I'm going to do while I gather up the ingredients, I'm going to turn on my oven to 350 degrees because this needs to cook about an hour at 350 degrees. And I will be back with, and we'll get started um, cleaning up the fruit and preparing it to go into the baking dish. And I will see you right after this. Now I've just washed my colander full of strawberries. I won't need all of these strawberries. Um, so I'll probably use some on the top when I serve it just, just to uh, have that little uh, difference between the cooked and the fresh fruit. Or I may just put it into the hubby's lunch. Just slice up some strawberries and put on a little cream and you know, we'll use them up is what I'm trying to say. So right here, I am just going to get busy and hull all of these uh, berries. So I'm going to need five cups because I have three cups. It doesn't look like three cups anymore um, because it's been frozen. So the, the flesh um, definitely gets smaller, but I have three cups in there. I can see because I wrote on the bag, uh, rhubarb three cups. And I'm going to cut these strawberries into about bite-sized pieces. So in this 
case I'm probably going to quarter most of them. And I'm going to measure five cups of fruit. Now, this is a wonderful spring recipe because, let's face it, you're not going to find rhubarb all year round, or at least certainly not where we live. There is no access to rhubarb year round. So um, this is one of those spring recipes. Most of the time now, uh, we can get strawberries year round because we're getting them from out of country mostly. And so they're available to us all the time, but it's really wonderful in the spring to have um, access to these wonderful fresh fruits. Kind of, it's kind of like a celebration how we managed to get through the winter, uh, at least <laughs> where we live, where we get really deep snows and we're really impacted by, whoops, we're really impacted by the uh, snow in that it's you know not easy to get out of your driveway every day when there's been a foot of snow fall overnight and uh, you have to heat up the car and you have to scrape the frost off the windows and sweep the snow off so everything takes a lot more time to ready yourself to get out so even though we live right in town we uh, still, I still find that we live like we did when we were out on the farm and we make a list throughout the week of things that we need to do when we're out and that way we're not making multiple trips because to uh, go through that every time you want to go um, because you've forgotten a quart of milk or something is kind of, um, it's a negative for sure. So we try really hard to um, keep our trips down to as few as possible out of the driveway in the middle of the winter time. So it's kind of a celebration when the fresh strawberries start coming in and those first signs of spring. The lilacs are just about to pop out here. I know that uh, where you live, you meet be my sorry, you might be in a completely different circumstance. It might be that um, you have already been, are well into spring and planting and have things growing, but we, as a general rule, don't plant anything till after the 24th of May because we still expect frosts at least that long. Um, but this year we have had very unseasonably hot weather. And so we're taking a chance. Hopefully it's gonna work out for us. I am just going to check and see where I am. Must be getting close. Uh, no, I have a ways to go yet. And I'm happy to be doing this today. Having this little fresh uh, treat. We certainly don't have a sweet or a pudding of some sort every day. Um, I try to do something once a week though even if it's just a trip to the Dairy Queen to bring home an ice cream treat, we try to have a treat once a week. But these, these uh, beautiful strawberries in the store and the uh, wonderful rhubarb makes this fantastic crisp. And as I said, you can make it with any fruit. If you've made an apple crisp, you certainly know the process, but I'm sure happy to share it with you today. And I'm looking for some new recipes to share with you guys. So that I think I've kind of gone through the ones that we use on the regular. So I'm going to have to get back into the old family cookbook and see what I can um, glean out of there to share with you and um, keep you coming back, I hope. I hope that you're still finding the channel interesting and that there are things on here that um, you'll make or share with other people so that they make them and that you're finding it still to be uh, useful to you. Now, we all know that strawberries are good for us for a lot of reasons, but so is rhubarb. Rhubarb contains some pretty amazing 
properties that are that's really good for our health. Um, and although lots of people don't care for rhubarb just by itself, my guess is you would really enjoy this recipe that um, where you don't taste the rhubarb as much. Now I also have a recipe on my channel for uh, rhubarb custard pie and I will try and remember to link that in the description box below. And also in the description box below there will be this recipe. So if you're sitting on the edge of your seat trying to write this all down, I would say don't worry about that because it's all going to be available in that description box below. So I have enough strawberries cut. So I'm just going to remove some of these things from the counter. This is going to go into the compost. I'm just going to move it over here for now. And here is my baking dish. Now this is a two liter, liter baking dish. It's probably about, I'm going to say 11 or 12 inches by nine inches around that. It's a, a two liter dish. And I'm going to add the strawberries to that. And we're going to add the rhubarb in here. You'll see it's pretty, pretty simple. And I need a big spoon. And I'm just going to give this a bit of a push around. I'm not really stirring it at this point. There was quite a bit of juice in the rhubarb, as it turns out. So I need three quarters of a cup of sugar and maybe just a little less than that. And I'm going to grate in about, I'm going to measure it over here on the side. I need about, you know, close to a tablespoon of orange zest. And I'm going to use the whole orange eventually. Um, but for right now, I'm just... I need the zest, so I'm trying hard to keep turning, spinning, turning, grating, because you don't want the white pith part to get into your zest, otherwise it gets kind of bitter. That pith is quite bitter. And I think that's going to do it. I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm just about around it now. Okay. So I am just going to scoop this in. Put that in there, and oh, that smells so nice, that fresh zest. Move that guy out of the way. Now, in this container here, I am going to cut this orange in half, and I'm going to use the juice of this orange inside the uh, apple crisp, and I'm going to add couple of things to it before I mix it in there. You're looking for about half a cup or so of juice and this great big orange is quite juicy so I'm sure I can achieve that. Well I shouldn't say I'm sure I can. I can but I'm reasonably confident. How about that? I'm reasonably confident. Whatever comes out of here is going to be just fine especially because I know that there's quite a bit of juice in the bottom there. And once the strawberries and the rhubarb start to cook, they will let off more juice as well. But yes, I did manage to get half a cup of juice in this. Now I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. You can leave the vanilla out if you don't want that additional flavor, but I happen to like it in there. Also, Time to get some more vanilla. And because I want to thicken this a little bit, I don't want it to be like super runny, I am going to add some cornstarch into the juice mixture. And because I see already the amount of juice that's in this pan, I am going to add two tablespoons of cornstarch. And that should make the whole thing hold together quite well. I'm going to use my little spoon. Oh, here's my bigger spoon. Man, I've got a mess going on. I guess most of the time mess turns into something delicious, so I shouldn't complain. I want to shout out to 
all my friends that have been sending me messages on um, comments on the videos. I really appreciate you doing that. It uh, keeps me inspired to continue on doing this. So now I am going to pour that into the bowl and then I'm going to give it a good stir around and then we're done with this part and we will move on to the topping which is just a simple crumble topping but while I say it's just simple there may be some of you out there who have never made it before so you stay tuned for this part and you can see that this is the perfect size for this. Um, if the rhubarb was fresh, it definitely would come up to the rim of the bowl, but it's not. So that's why it doesn't quite come up, but this is gonna be perfect. No worries about this. I think you could also make this with uh, frozen strawberries out of the frozen food section in your grocery store. Definitely you could do that along with whatever other fruit you might come up with, or you could just make a strawberry crumble, why not? Um, just keep the ratios. You want that eight cups of fruit to make this recipe or any crumble recipe really. You need that much fruit. Okay, so I am going to set this aside. I'm going to tidy this up and get everything ready to make the crumble topping and I will be right back in a minute. Okay, now I'm going to make the crumble topping for this and it will um, be a simple mixture for sure. It looks like I've got a lot going on here, but it's just simple measuring, so don't be put off by that. I am going to need a cup of flour, so let's start over there. And bring the flour over, and I am not going to be too concise with it, but a cup. I'm going to measure off a cup. And we'll put that to the side. And then I think we need a cup of oatmeal. So I'll use this same container, the same measuring cup, and measure out the cup of oatmeal. And then I can set that aside. And put it back on the oatmeal and put it out of the way. And then I'm going to need a half a cup of white sugar and half a cup of brown sugar. Yes, yes it is sugar heavy because there is sugar in every part of it. Um, but I'm sure that if you're not having a sweet more than once a week you'll be happy that you're having this one, that's for sure. And because we need a little bit of salt in all of this I'm going to measure out about a half a teaspoon. There it is. I used my palm. Uh, which is what I'm used to doing. And there might be lumps in my brown sugar, so I'm just going to give this a stir first. Make sure that I get the lumps out. And I'm feeling pretty comfortable with that now. I think I've got them. I love brown sugar. I love the depth of flavor that brown sugar gives that nothing else does. And then I need three quarters of a cup of butter. So I'm starting with a fresh pound of butter and I don't know about where you live, but where I live, there's actually measurements on the side of the pound of butter. So I know that I need three quarters, so I'm just going to put it down there to that mark and I'm going to cut right there instead of worrying about a measuring cup. Now, because this is cold, cold butter, I'm going to cube it some so that my work ahead of me isn't so, so much. So I am going to cube it up into smaller pieces so that when I start to cut it in with my pastry cutter, it doesn't take me so, so long to do that. And I'll turn it over. Don't want to handle this with my hands too much and melt it, but there we go. This should all break up into littler pieces and I'll be set to go. I'm using a pastry cutter today, but you could definitely use just like a couple of knives or forks together. I've done it both ways in the past or I've even crumbled it with my fingers and I found I had a good result. So don't be 
uh, put off if you don't have the right tool. Very often we don't and lots of times it's not practical to have every one of these little kitchen tools that we see because we don't have room for them. So keep that in mind. There's always a different way to do it. You definitely do not have to go out of your way to buy special tools for many projects in the kitchen. Just make do with what you have and uh, you'll still have a good result. So now I've just got a simple pastry cutter. This one is not a fancy one and it's had a lot of years of uh, experience here and I am just going to cube this butter in and oh sorry cut this butter in and it's going to be a little bit stubborn because it is really cold it came right out of the fridge and I'm going to use a knife every now and then to clean it off and start over again and having this butter cold will give us nice little pockets of, of um, crispy bits just as if you were making a pie dough and you want to keep your um, dough cold as possible for for your pie because it makes it flakier it's the same same here we want our butter pieces to be um, well distributed in everything else and that will give us a nice flaky flaky crumble wow i'm salivating just thinking about this and i did go out and buy a little container of ice cream to have with this later you can serve this hot you can serve it cold um, with, whichever way works out for you if it's the middle of the afternoon and you're just putting this on as i am you could definitely make it for your dinner and serve it hot and um, it would be delicious so there i'm pretty happy with it i can see some of the pieces are still a bit bigger and i probably will just run my hands quickly through it i don't want to melt the butter but I also want it to be well incorporated, so. so. Don't be afraid to use these tools that God gave us on the ends of our arms. There we go. Feeling pretty good about that. So, this seems like a lot, but it's actual, in actual fact, it's just the perfect amount. And I'm just going to start putting it onto the top this is going to make a nice thick crumble and it I won't go right to the very edges with the crumble if I can because I want there to be room for the uh, fruit underneath to boil up along the edges that'll also be an indicator to me of when it's cooked and there we go dump every little bit of it on there and smooth it out And I've placed this dish onto a piece of parchment paper and onto a little baking tray because crumbles can tend to be a bit juicy and they can go over top of your pan and if they do they're an awful mess to clean up so try to avoid that I put the paper underneath it because I've had it boil over and trying to get it off the pan is a pain in the neck so I'm trying to save myself some work in the end this is going to go into a 350 degree oven for about one hour until it's really golden brown on top. You can pierce it with a fork in the middle and um, know that everything's soft in there. Then you know you're ready to go. But about an hour. Keep an eye on it. And I will be right back when this is coming out of the oven. Here it is. Doesn't that look delicious? I, I sure think it does. And it smells so good. I love the uh, the, add, the addition of the vanilla in there really adds something to it. So it's still bubbling. I hope you can see that all around. Uh, the edge is bubbling and the top is just starting to crisp up really good. I'm going to uh, serve this out. Oh my gosh. 
Guys, doesn't this look fantastic? I know that we're certainly going to enjoy that tonight. And I'm just going to push that hot pan out of the way. And I'm going to scoop some ice cream onto the top of this. And call that good. A simple spring dessert that anybody can make uh, with the things that you uh, either purchase at the local farmers market or that you get out of the, the frozen food aisle at your grocery store and you can use it for so many other things than just uh, strawberries and rhubarb just uh, follow the hints that I left in the description box um, below as well as the recipes down there and I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that if you have you'll consider giving it a thumbs up and like the video uh, share it with your friends and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel please subscribe and that way if you hit the subscription button you can get the videos as they come out every week on Tuesday and until next time folks I hope that you're all well and safe and I will see you again really soon take care everybody bye bye Thank mm -hmm. you.